Good morning from the meadows in Edinburgh. Um, you can't really see it now because it's gotten rather overcast, but Edinburgh Castle is just past those, that line of trees and way over there. Um, and just over here is where I was dancing today um, in, this, in this whole spot here. But I'd like to point out that that green patch over there is called the Lynx, which for my golf enthusiasts overseas was apparently, if it wasn't the first golf course, it was one of the first golf courses in the world. So it's one of the oldest ones anyway. And it's public, so anyone can use it at any time. Isn't that wonderful? And then this is a, a cafe during the summertime and now it's closed down. Um, this is quite close to where I'm staying so I thought it'd just come, the grass is quite muddy so I went to find a harder harder space to dance. And um, when I arrived I found this wonderful quote as inspiration for my day. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. You know, that's attributed to Marianne Williamson, A Return to Love, but I think it's actually Nelson Mandela. But it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I thought that was a wonderful um, poetic inspiration to my day when I arrived here and I said, yeah, you know, that's exactly right. And it's interesting because um, yesterday I was talking to my friend, Kristen, who lives here, and she was uh, telling me a very sad story of um, someone she works with uh, was very tragically killed uh, by uh, hit by a car when he was just crossing the street automatically. He was 35 years old. Um, wonderful. She said he was one of the good ones, Katie. And and it it has just really you know shook their whole department and I'm, I'm sure his family's world as well as um, a, a, as well as anyone whose life that he, he touched and it got me thinking about this obviously because there's so I was dancing with him in mind and, and the people in his life and then I saw that quote and and it made me think that you know and it's like all these things I'm saying about being happy and and asking people um, you know uh, what makes you happy and I, I, I was in a taxi yesterday and I said to the taxi driver I said so what makes you happy and we got talking I talked to him about the silent revolution and he said, well, don't you think then that will make people think that they should be happy? And I was like, I, and I thought, well, yes, <laughs> it should. As opposed to asking, like, the, I'd rather people were happy. You know, I'd rather know what makes something happy. And, and, they're, they're, and it doesn't have, I think, too often we associate being happy with these, like, great, big, extreme things. And, and my, uh, my friend Carly he, uh, sent me a message, and she said something like, red shoes make her really happy for whatever reason and 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 it could be the most the most simple things you know and 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 this this taxi driver kind of said well you know my kids make me happy not all the time mind <laughs> and then he's just started laughing and I was like exactly you know that's exactly the shift that that needs to happen in the most simple ways and it is a revolution it is radical to say actually yes I do expect you that you have not all the time and it, it, and, be, and that is not a a um, kind of like obsession we must be happy I mean it, it life is about balance right and, and not every moment we all have our dark moments as well and um, but to focus on cultivating those things in our life that make us happy absolutely absolutely I, I, I totally want that <laughs> I totally expect that and that is a revolution and and I was I was linking it into this this, this young man who, who is, has died and and I thought to myself you know we always say 
you know, well, if I was hit by a bus tomorrow kind of thing, and he was, and you could. So at what stage of our lives do we start living and, and believing in that dream and making conscious effort to, to do that in a very simple level? It's, it's just a shift in thinking, I think. Largely, I think largely it's a shift in thinking, and I think there's minuscule shifts in thinking by us as individuals will lead to a very empowered world that we all can celebrate and, and will do by virtue of our, of our living. So um, that's my message today. I'll, I think I'll, I don't know where I'll be tomorrow because I have to get a train early in the morning, so it might just be a, a little tiny dance somewhere, but. Um, but yeah, it was quite interesting being in Edinburgh. It's a very different vibe. Obviously, I'm not near water and uh, a different environment and a different city. It's what it says that Edinburgh is stirred, not shaken. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, so that's that. So have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.